How's everybody? There it is. We'd be blessed. We'd be highly flavored and favored. Because God be with us. Who can be against us? Glory. God is good all the time. Amen. We're on the move. We're on the move. We're moving on out. Hallelujah. We're getting closer and closer. You know, it's a time of heavy repentance right now. 40 days of repentance started the Alu, the month of Alu first. Praise God. Would you turn your swords that have words of God in it to Romans 12? Romans 12. I used to be a Roman. I was roaming for the truth. It was called Catholicism. Then I found the truth, got filled, delivered, healed, and realized, boy, was I deceived. But praise be to God. Romans 12 and verse 1 and 2. Let's speak it. I beseech you, my brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your responsibility. Everybody say responsibility. responsibility. The word responsibility represents something very powerful. It is an area where responsibility says this. It is your ability to respond. That's what responsibility is. It's an ability, your ability to respond. And what are you responding to? Your call and your purpose, which depends on your destiny. So the more that you are responsible, the level of your responsibility determines the level of your destiny. So these are levels of responsibility. Now go to verse 2. And he says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Those are three levels of responsibility. Responsibility, responsible in service to the king and his kingdom. So, so many people are more responsible to the worldly things than they do our kingdom things. Galatians chapter 6. Levels of responsibility. Remember, responsibility is the ability to respond. So when you're not responsible, not a person of responsibility, you are not one that's able to respond correctly. Galatians 6 and verse 1, please. Let's read it. Brethren, if a man is what? Overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work or his own responsibility. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own what? Load or his own what? Responsibility. Does everybody see this? It is important. You are to bear your own load. That's the level of your responsibility to respond to the call and purpose. Again, will determine the level of your destiny, where God places you. The more responsible you are, the more the destiny and that level of destiny he gives you. And we know that there's an area 30, 60, and 100 fold. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 
So it is the ability to respond to the call and purpose. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. You know, so many people are going, gosh, I really don't know what my destiny is or what, what's what. Well, the more responsible you are, the more things unfold. The less responsible you are, the more scattered people become. In verse 14, it says what? Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers, but be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be what? Ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we see here there is a responsibility of rightly dividing the word of truth. Some people don't get the word unless they come to service. They don't even go after the word. But shun profane and idle babblings. Amen. For they will increase the more ungodliness. And their message will spread like cancer. Hymenaeus and Philistus are this, of this sort. Who have what? Strayed. They did what? They strayed. Why? Because they lack of responsibility. They strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection has already passed, and they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the found, found, foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. So there's an area where we have a responsibility, rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, so many times people... Our, and that depends on your relationship with the Holy Spirit. We have a responsibility to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. He desires fellowship in everything that we do. You know, let me give you an example. Rightly dividing the word of truth. An ability to correctly respond against a lie. Against babblings. Against what? Ungodliness. With what? A rebuke. A rebuke or a reject? No. So many people are weenies out there, man. Bunch of wimps. Afraid of hurting somebody's feelings. Who gives a hoot? What about God and what he thinks? Oh gosh, if I rebuke that person, they might dislike me. They're going to attack you anyways. And sometime, if they're that way out of line, they're going to come against you and betray you anyways. They're going to say bad things about you no matter what. <laughs> so there's an ability. It's your responsibility and our responsibility to be able to rebuke someone when you know it ain't right. Oh, hallelujah. And the only way that a person can do that is by maintaining a responsibility of eating of the word of truth. Eating the word. See, when you truly eat the word of truth, you have boldness. Why? Because you're now not only just know the truth, you live the truth. You're now a part, you are the written epistle now. Your life is truth. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Levels of responsibility. 2 Corinthians 3. Verse 12. Therefore, since we have such what? Hope. We use great boldness. Hello? Of speech. Unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds were blinded for in this, until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil, the scales, are taken away in the anointing of Christ. But even to this day, when Moses has read, a veil lies on their heart. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. 
Now the Lord is the Spirit, or He is the Holy Spirit. And where the Holy Spirit is, the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What's happening in turning as you... Turning to the Holy Spirit is a responsibility of priority. It is a responsibility of prayer. If you are not responsible, your priorities are all over the place. So turning to the Holy Spirit is a responsibility of priority to move from glory to glory. In this priority of responsibility, we have the requirement to be able to hear and to be able to see what God is saying and what he is showing us. He's always bringing us into a divine order. Order and responsibility walk hand in hand. Amen. Order and responsibility walk hand in hand. The more responsible, more responsible you are, the more in order you are. Of course, the less responsible you are, the you're scattered. You ever heard the word scatterbrain? Why do people call somebody a scatterbrain? Because they're not responsible. Amen? First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. <clears throat> Let's speak it, please. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims to abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or as governors or as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. In other words, many people use this freedom. They actually misuse the freedom because of lack of responsibility. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. For this is commendable if, if because of the conscience towards God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully for what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults you take it patiently but when you do good and suffer if you take it patiently this is commendable before God for to this you were called because Christ also suffered for us leaving us as an example that you should follow his steps powerful Powerful responsibility of converting your soul into the image of Christ. By the level of your commitment of serv to service to the king and kingdom or serving self, there's one or the other. See, so your responsibility reaches a level where your service is to the king and the kingdom. You are totally committed. Responsibility is always attached to commitment. If you're not a person of commitment, then you're not a person of responsibility. You must be committed. Irresponsible, irresponsible people will misuse this liberty, but they will not go unpunished. Nobody escapes. Because you're either earning God's trust or losing it. And you're also maintaining God's protection or beginning to lose it. 1 Peter 5. 
Is everybody okay? Amen. Levels of responsibility. You know, one of the areas that, again, we've talked about this before, about boundaries. The Holy Spirit always resetting our boundaries for responsibility. Acknowledging the boundaries that God has for you is always an area of responsibility. It's your responsibility to recognize these things. It's your responsibility to be sensitive to these things. And if you're not responsible to recognize or be sensitive to these things, you'll step over the boundaries and the enemy will eat us up. He's waiting. He's waiting. He waits for the, the, that moment that you begin to compromise or be complacent of your responsibility, which is the ability to you to respond to your call and your purpose or the voice of God. He waits for that compromise because he knows once that begins to slide, he can slide things in. See, we have a responsibility what we put in front of our face. We have a responsibility what we put in front of our eyes. We have a responsibility what we put in our ears. We have a responsibility of who we associate with. These are all responsibilities that God sets boundaries for me and you. Why? So he can maintain his character in us. Other than that, the old man begins to maintain in a character. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5, let's speak it. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. So let me share this with you. Casting all your cares upon him for he cares for you. If you are willing to be submissive, because it's a responsibility. It's a commitment. We submit to God. We submit to these things. We submit to his authorities. We submit to his offices. We submit to his elders. Because he says he's going to resist the proud, but he'll give more grace to the humble. So there's an area of responsibility. If you're a person who is committed and you are responsible, you will maintain the cloak of humility in everything you do. Because your life is no longer yours, it's his. You no longer live for you anymore. Your purpose and call is for kingdom and kingdom business, and that is it. No matter whether it's at a workplace, no matter what you're doing in service and everything that you do, you're always thinking kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. Lord, what do you want me to do next? What do you want me? You're always waiting for the next command. What do you want me to do? Is there somebody you want me to talk to? Who are you bringing across my path? In verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. In other words, he's waiting to crush you. Any opportunity you give him, he will crush you. But of course, we know to be sober is to be alert. Vigilant is to be consistent. Now, a person that is not responsible, you know, is not consistent. They're not consistent. And a person is not consistent, you know, you can't trust because they're not responsible. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Well, a person that's not responsible is really not walking in faith enough. Their faith has not reached a level to resist all the time. Does everybody understand this? See, faith, responsibility also builds faith. The more you're responsible, the more faith is built. So there's a level of faith that gets built in you that you're able to resist more. And when you're able to resist more, the enemy has less access to you. He stays at a distance. But of course, he waits for that first compromise. And he gets to get close. It says, resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. 
Submission is a great responsibility relating to carrying God's or gaining God's trust. Again, there's area of recognizing your pride, rebellion, able to resist evil influence. Now, you can't, again, you can't resist evil influence without maintaining a level of responsibility. The devil definitely crushes. Consistency is responsibility. And it is our responsibility to recognize. Psalm 119. And now the devil loves to come at you on your blind side. So we need to remove all blind sides. Blind sides are eliminated by being consistent and responsible. And, and the reason why that they're eliminated is because if you don't see, God does. And he'll protect any area of blind side in you if you are responsible. But if you're not responsible, if you're not consistent, if you're not committed, then the enemy will definitely access you. And then you always regret what we did. Oh, man, I can't believe it. I did this again. Man, how stupid can I be and still breathe? You know, I can't believe it. Why? Because there was something that we lacked on, we compromised on. Psalm 119 and verse 66. People that constantly repeat the same thing over and over are irresponsible. Why? Because they're not fully committed. Does everybody get that? Again, without being committed, you can't be responsible. They may have a lot of words of commitment, but they're only words. Words of commitment without doing the acts of commitment does no good. So words of commitment without responsibility is zip. <laughs> Verse 66. Read it with me. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I what? Went astray. Well, why was that person afflicted? Because he went astray. But now I keep your what? Your word. You are good and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may what? Learn your statutes. In other words, this person is learning from his mistakes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. Wow. <laughs> Afflictions come from going astray. Astray comes from lack of responsibility or lack of commitment. Hebrews 6. Hebrews 6. Levels of responsibility. Verse 1 through 3. Therefore, leaving discussion of elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to what? Perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. In other words, if a person is responsible, living a life of responsibility and commitment, he doesn't have to go over these things again. It's automatic. He doesn't have to be reminded that you need to repent. Amen. Well, that should be automatic. Oh, hallelujah. Let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God, of doctrines of baptism or laying on the hands of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. 
For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the grace of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. In other words, many people, in other words, God's got to have to break that heart. That's all you and I can do is pray for that person and hope that the Lord breaks that heart and brings that person and grants that person repentance. You know, you may go and try, man, you need to repent for what you, ah, oh, their heart's hardened. The veil's over. It's like they put a helmet on their head and there's no air in there. They can't hear you, can't see you. They're so caught up in themselves and their own desires of lust that they can't hear you. Their own will, they can't hear you. You can't, you can't rescue them. You must allow the course to run and only God can break that heart. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, we must move on to perfection. It's geared by the level of your responsibility. Romans 6. Romans 6 and verse 12. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore what? Don't let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as an instrument of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? You are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that through you were slave, though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Now, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of the flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for what? For what? Holiness. Whoa. Now, responsibility... It is our responsibility to present your members as a temple as slaves of righteousness. Amen? Now, the level of your obedience, I'm going to share this. The level of your obedience is the fruit of your responsibility. The level of obedience is the fruit of your responsibility. Because there's some people that may obey in certain things, but not in everything. So the level of your obedience is the fruit of your responsibility. It will also bring up your level of your responsibility. Ephesians chapter 2. Remember, God says obedience is better than sacrifice. See, so many people rely on their sacrifices. Oh, Lord, I've given up this for you. I've given up there for you. Sometimes I think the Lord just says, so what? <laughs> what did I give up for you? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Glory. Let's speak it. And you who made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of air, the spirit who now, is, who now works in the sons of disobedience, 
among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were idiots and dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ for grace you've been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Well, many people don't even know that. <laughs> that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a what? It is a gift of God. Not, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Verse 10. For we are as what? We are as what? Workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are the workmanship of his, we are, in other words, we are his trophies. We are his trophies. <laughs> his trophies of responsibilities. We are his trophies of responsibility pertaining to kingdom business and kingdom life. We are his trophies. Man, if you begin to look at yourself as a trophy of the Lord, in other words, he's using you as a trophy to show what he's done. Now, this is where you got to self-examine yourself. Am I truly a trophy of the Lord? Well, if I'm truly not a trophy of the Lord, I'm, I'm irresponsible. I'm not committed. And I'm not consistent. Amen? 1 Corinthians 4. First Corinthians 4. Now, you might have been a trophy of the Lord, but if you've been tarnished, <laughs> rusted out, <laughs> blemished, it's time to get a buffing job, man, to get polished up. First Corinthians 4 and verse 1. Would you read it with me, please? Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. Is a faithful one responsible? Is a faithful one committed? Is a faithful one obedient? Is a faithful one consistent? Yeah. But with me, it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by a human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. We are stewards of the mysteries of God, found faithful, or what we call responsible. Responsible to what? The call and the purpose of his will. Your level of responsibility will bring the level of reward. Your level of responsibility will bring the level of reward that you receive in the praise from God or the honor from God. Again, responsibility is the ability to respond to the call and purpose of God. Matthew 25. You know, one of the things that the Lord does is he challenges us or what we call testing. You remember where Gideon's army, when he, challenged, he tested them at the waters, who's going to lay down their sword? You know, who was more detailed? Who was uh, awake? Who was alert? Because they knew there was a battle going on, but so, so many people, because the fight isn't, isn't manifesting right then and there, they lay down things and, re, and, and not, not aware Matthew 25, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. 
And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. Ability. The ability to what? Respond. And immediately he went on a journey. So God won't give you any more than you can handle. Amen? Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with, the, with them and made another five talents. Another, he was responsible. And likewise, he who had received the two gained two more, but he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. He was stinking lazy, not responsible, not committed. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with him. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. And his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful, responsible servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more. Remember, he, he, these were given to them according to their abilities. Amen? So God knows what you can handle. Oh, hallelujah. And he says, look, I, I gained two more talents. And the Lord said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So the reward was the same for the five talents and the two talents. Because they were responsible. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you were a hard man. He was making excuses. <laughs> Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent to the ground. Look, there you still have what's yours. Nice. But he said, but his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy bonehead, servant, un irresponsible, inconsistent, uncommitted, disobedient servant. You knew I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. <clears throat> for to each, to, for to everyone who has, more will be given. Some people wonder why they're not getting more. Irresponsible, inconsistent, uncommitted. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Whoa. Good and faithful is responsible stewards of his property. All of his things. Whether it be his vehicles. Remember, you and I don't know nothing. They're his homes, his vehicles, they're his tools, they're his furniture, there's his buildings, that's his equipment. Maintaining of a level of responsibility of all of these things is the maintaining of accountability also. There is a level of cleanness, I want to say cleanliness in the atmosphere. If you're a person of responsibility, you can sense that you need to clean out this atmosphere. It's unclean. You don't like, you don't like a dirty atmosphere or an unclean atmosphere. You don't like it. So there's an area of where we are maintaining a level of cleanliness in the atmosphere, in environment, and in self. Environment is things of the tangible things. But the atmosphere is in the air. And then, of course, the area of yourself, maintaining a cleanliness. Amen? First Peter chapter 4. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Levels of response. You think God is looking to see the level of responsibility we're at? Amen. The Lord is out to bless us. It says he comes to give. The devil comes to steal. Amen. First Peter 4. In verse 7. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. 1 Peter 4, verse 7. But the end of all things is where? At hand. Therefore be what? Be serious and watchful in your prayers. Wow, a person that's inconsistent or irresponsible in prayer time, getting dressed with the full armor of God, is an idiot. Just plain and simple. They got no consciousness of the things of God or the kingdom of God. Everything is about themselves. They're too busy to prepare themselves for a spiritual battle. Does everybody get it? And that's why they're always losing. They're always losing. They can't gain anything. And they blame everyone else for everything that goes on. Oh, glory. I go on with all that all day. Hallelujah. So be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without what? Oh, snap. That one you need to highlight real big. Without what? Grumbling or complaining. <laughs> and as each one has received the gift, minister to one another as good what? Stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let them speak of the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let them do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be what? Glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion forever and ever and ever and ever. In other words, be serious, be responsible in prayer, in watching, be detailed, discern the times and seasons. You know, in the tabernacle, there's the three chambers. You'll hear me speak about the tabernacle all the time. Because in the tabernacle, in the three chambers, there's three levels of responsibility. Every chamber has a level of responsibility that you and I are to maintain. Especially even in the outer court. You know what you were to maintain? We're to maintain an area of conviction, which brings repentance. In the second chamber, we're to maintain a the, the responsibility of maintaining your garments to be clean as priests. And then the third chamber is maintaining to be a soldier and a warrior, always fighting, willing to fight, battling, never laying your sword down. It's constant. It's constant. That's why the word says, bind the strong man before you enter anywhere so you can plunder the goods of the evil one. People don't even think about those things. Because you won't think about those things if you're not responsible or committed or consistent. And I'm going to close in Revelation 17. Revelation 17, verse 9. Levels of responsibility, the ability to respond to your call and your purpose will bring, the whatever level you're able to do that will bring the level of destiny has, God has set for you. So the more you're committed, the more responsible you are. In verse 9, here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings, five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth, and is of the seventh and going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as of yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. And those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. For many are called, but few are chosen. So you have the called, the chosen and the faithful. The end result of faithful is responsible. Amen? 
examine yourself if you are responsible in everything. When you're asked to do something, are you responsible? Are you responsible to see it all the way through? See, if you can't see it all the way through and complete it, then you're not responsible. You may be responsible enough to start it, but to complete it is the level of responsibility you get to. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I pray every one of us, Lord, will fall into the place of not only called, chosen, but also be faithful. We ask, Lord, that you continue to examine us and bring us to a self-examination of what level we are of responsibility. If we are totally committed. And, Lord, release conviction and release repentance where it needs to be needed so that we're not just doing time in this earth or wasting time in this earth. But we are totally committed to the kingdom kingdom business, and serving the king, knowing our life is in your hands. And we promise to give you all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.